Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter number 25 of this Blender Master course Scene Lighting and Cameras. If you are new to this course then do check out the previous 25 chapters from the link of the playlist in the pinned comment. Now in this chapter we'll be understanding about the lighting in Blender, the functioning of cameras in Blender and so here we have this default file open in Blender and the first topic for this chapter is understanding about lighting. So here we have this default point light object in Blender and to see its effect we have to go to the material preview mode or to the render preview mode. Mode. Right now we'll select the material preview mode. If I try to move it by pressing G and move around like this, you won't notice any difference on the cube. Like there are no reflections, no shadows and this is because the scene light and the scene world are not activated. And to fix this, click on this drop down arrow and here you have the option of scene lights and the scene world. We'll turn on both of them and now if I go back to the 3D viewport, with this light selected press G and if I move around like this, you will notice the reflections appearing on your default cube object. And for now I'll fix its position here, so left click to find light. Now we can even change the color or the type of this light and to do this we have to go to the object data properties. So with this light selected click on this bulb or the light icon which is the object data properties and here you have the four types of lights. The first one is the point light, the second one is the sunlight, the third one is the spotlight and the fourth one is the area light. We'll see the effect of each one but right now let's select the point light and here we have this option of color. So using this you can change the color of your light and then you have this power option which is basically used to increase or decrease the intensity of light. Now to see the effect of different lights, I'll remove this default cube from the scene by pressing X and we'll add a Suzanne or the monkey model. So press shift plus A, go to mesh and select the monkey model. Let's move it upwards by pressing G and then Z, place it here and let's rotate it in the Z axis by 90 degrees. So press R, then Z and press 90, then enter to confirm. We'll also be adding a plane below this monkey model so that we can see the shadows properly. So press shift plus A, go to mesh and add the plane. Tab into the edit mode and let's scale it up by pressing S and left click to finalize. Let's get back to the object mode. Now I'll select this light and to see the difference between the four types of lights, we have to place this light exactly at the top of the monkey model. For this we'll try to adjust this light's position from different views. First we'll go to the front view by pressing 1 on the numpad. It's appearing like a side view because we have rotated this monkey model by 90 degrees. And now to move it, we'll first look at this axis. Since it is colored as red, so it is X axis. And you can even confirm it from here. The red one is the X, the green one is the Y and the blue is the Z. So currently we'll move it in X direction. So press G and X and we'll move it like this. Left click to finalize. Then for the side view we'll press 3 and we'll move it in Y direction. So press G and Y and let's move it here. Let's go to the top view by pressing 0 on the numpad and here we have this lamp perfectly placed in the middle. Now if I try to change the angle, you will notice that this light is falling only on the head of the Suzanne or the monkey model and as a result only the reflection of its head part is visible on this plane. We can't see the face of the monkey model because light is not able to reflect on it. And this is how the point light works. Basically this point light is an omnidirectional point light source. And to view the face of the monkey, we'll move it by pressing G and then X and let's move it here and left click to finalize. Now we can clearly see that the face of the monkey is now visible and also the position of the shadow has now moved. The lighting in Blender works in a very similar way to the lighting in real world. If you move a light in real world, you will also notice a change in the reflections and change in shadows. And the same is true for Blender also. Also to change the color of this light, you can go to the object data properties, click on this color option and from here you can change the color of your light. By default it is set to white but suppose you want your light to be yellow colored. So you can change it to yellow color from this color wheel and the color of this light would change to yellow. Also if you think that the intensity of this light is too high then you can go to the power option here and reduce it to a lower value like 300, 400 and then the intensity or the power of this light would reduce. But right now we'll change it to its previous value of 1000 watt. So I'll go to the power value and change it to 1000 watt. Now the second type of light is the sun. So if I select this, you will notice that now our scene has a lot of lighting and that's because the strength of the light is too high for the sun type of light. Usually the strength of this sunlight is kept between a value of 0 to 10 for a perfect lighting but right now it is set to 1000 and that's why it appears like this. So I'll go to the strength option and let's change it to a value between 0 to 10. I'll change it to 6 and now the lighting looks perfect. Now the main difference between the point and the sunlight is that you have this line originating from the light light source and this line basically defines the angle at which this light would fall and to change this angle simply click R and move your cursor. You will notice that as you rotate it the influence of light on the objects in the scene would change and to move it even more accurately you can press X to rotate it only in the X direction, similarly Y to rotate it only in the Y direction and Z to rotate it only in the Z direction. Now the angle that you want to finalize would depend on what exact objects you are having in your scene, at what angle the lighting looks perfect. Right now I 
feel that lighting at this angle looks perfect so i left click to finalize it and now moving to the next type we have the spot type of light so i'll select this and to see the light properly we need to increase the power from here so we'll set it to a higher value like 1000 watt and now we see some light in our scene as the name suggests the spot light is basically a directional cone light source to explore it properly let's press g and then z to move it upwards now this one also works similar to the sunlight because you can rotate it by pressing r and moving around your cursor like this and also you can rotate it in specific axis like the x-axis or the y-axis or the z-axis by pressing their respective shortcut keys but to make it look perfect we we'll first have to scale this down so i'll press s and let's scale it down like this scaling it down won't impact the reflection or the intensity of light in any way now to move this light simply press g and now you can move this light let's place it here now suppose we want to rotate this light in such a way that we will be able to clearly see the monkey face for this with the light selected press r and first let's try it in x-axis so press x and try to move your cursor we see that by rotating it in x-axis we got a perfect lighting for our scene so we'll finalize this by left mouse button click and this is how the spotlight works you can also change the color of this light from here suppose you want red color or blue color or any other color then you can change the color of the light from here let's keep it to light blue color and now let's move to the fourth type of light which is the area light so i'll select the area light from here let's zoom out now this area light is basically a directional area light source and by default it is rectangle in shape but you can't see any rectangle shape light here and that is because it is very small in size to see it in our scene we have to scale it up so press s and move your cursor away and you will begin to see a rectangle near the source of light now if you remember i told you that in the spotlight type even if you increase the scale it won't affect your objects reflections or its shadows but this is not true in case of area light if i scale it up by a very high number for example i press s and to scale it by 10 times i press 1 0 or maybe 100 times by pressing another 0 then you will notice that the lighting would reduce to cancel this i'll right click and you can understand it in this way that more the size of the area light lesser will be the lighting on your object and the reason behind this is very simple when you scale up the area light the same light intensity is now spread over a larger surface area this results in the scene receiving the same amount of total light but spread out in such a way that it appears to be dimmer and just like you could rotate the light in case of sun and spotlight you can even do the same in the area light for this press r and move your cursor to rotate the light also just like every other light you can change the color from here you can change it to any color that you like and you will see that particular color as the color of the light in your scene so these are all the four types types of lights in blender you can even add some more lights by pressing shift plus a and here you have the option of light so you can select the type of light from here so suppose i add the point light it will get added at the location of the 3d cursor and to move it upwards press g and z let's move it upwards and whenever a new light is added by default its color is white and the power is 10 watt and this is all in the lighting in blender see there is one more important thing to remember the best type and the placement of lights depend on the scene you are creating so whenever you're working on a project you need to experiment with different types of light and their parameters like the color the power the size of the light to find what would work the best for your project and it always takes a lot of practice and time to create realistic lighting in blender and now we are moving to the next topic of this chapter which is understanding the cameras in blender so by default we have this camera in our scene to enter the camera view press 0 on the numpad and suppose you want to change the position of this camera for this one option is to press G and move your camera like this and press R to rotate it like this but a better way is to use the lock camera to view option and to enable it press n go to the view option here and here you have the lock camera to view option so i'll turn this on and now if i try to move my scene the camera will also move along with it suppose i finalize the location and the rotation here and come out of the camera view by pressing zero on the numpad we'll notice that the position of this camera has changed previously it was located over here but now its position has changed to this point also you can add multiple cameras to your scene and you would be doing this when you're working on big projects where you need to render animations or your scene from different angles and for this we have to press shift plus a to add the camera here you have the camera option so i'll select this and the new camera is added at the position where the 3d cursor is located to change its position i will press g and then z to move it upwards and suppose i want to enter the camera view of this newly added camera but if i use my previous method that is to press zero on the numpad we will see the camera view of the default camera let's press zero to come out of the camera view and to enter the camera view of the second camera we have to use the shortcut which is to hold the control button and press 0 and now this is the camera view of the second camera that we added in our scene here the lock camera to view is enabled and so if i try to move around the scene by holding the middle mouse button and dragging my cursor like this and then if i scroll down we can see here that we now have a different view of the scene so in simple words if you have to come out of the camera view you have to press 0 on the numpad and right now if i press 0 on the numpad you will enter the same camera view
view. That's because in the same collection, we have this camera.001 selected. But if I come out of the camera view by pressing 0 on the numpad again and go to the scene collection, select the default camera and now if I press control and 0 on the numpad, we'll enter the camera view of the default camera. This might be confusing if you're learning it for the first time, but in reality, it's very simple. You just have to come out of the camera view by pressing 0 on the numpad, select the specific camera whose camera view you want to see. Suppose I select the camera.001 and now to enter the camera view, press control plus 0 in the numpad. And this is how you can work with multiple cameras together. Now, if you come to the object data properties, you will find some camera settings here. But the most important ones are the type of camera and the focal length. For now, I'll select the default camera. And here in the object data properties, if I select the type, we have three types here. By default, it is set to perspective. But if I change it to orthographic, you will observe that the camera changes. Let's enter the camera view to see the changes. So I'll press control plus zero on the numpad. And here we see that instead of getting a 3D view or a perspective view of the 3D viewport and the object, we are getting an orthographic view. We learned about the difference between the perspective and the orthographic view in this chapter of the series. So if you want to understand this concept completely, you can check the link of this chapter as well as all the other chapters in the pinned comment. But coming back to the lens type, in most of the cases, or maybe even more than 99% of the cases, you will be using the perspective type only. So I'll change the lens type to the perspective and we again have this 3D or a perspective look of the 3D viewport. Then you have this focal length option and by using this option, you can change the focal length of your camera lens. By default, it is set to 50, but if I increase it, the focal length of the camera will increase and if I reduce it, the focal length of the camera would reduce. Let's get back to the default value. To view its effect properly, I'll come out of the camera view by pressing 0 on the numpad and if I try to increase the focal length, you will notice that our camera is basically being stretched up like this. This is because the focal length of the camera has changed. In the real world, different lenses of cameras have different focal length and any change in the focal length of the camera also changes the result or the output it produces. For example, if I go to the camera view by pressing Ctrl plus 0, we observe that we are getting a zoomed in output because we have increased the focal length. But if I reduce it, we get a zoomed out result. In reality, the concept of focal length is a bit complex to understand. But to understand it simply, you just need to remember that to make it look like a real camera view, you have to set your focal length somewhere between 35 mm and 50 millimeters. By default, Blender sets it to 50 millimeters. So I'll change the focal length again to 50 millimeters. And also this brings us to the end of this chapter. In this chapter, we learned about the four types of lights in Blender, try to rotate and change the position of these lights, also explored the color and the power options here. Then we move to the next topic, which were the cameras. We understood about changing the position of camera by enabling the lock camera to view. Then we discovered about multiple cameras in Blender and also about how you can switch between the two cameras. And our next chapter, will be the chapter number 26 basics of animation so don't forget to subscribe to our channel press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming chapters thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one